you talk a lot about purpose and wh what is your thoughts as to do you have like a an exact answer as to why we are created as humans and why we are here like what is the purpose of life why have we been given life i think we're here to struggle and to learn i don't think we're here to be happy that's why when we keep going back to the happy argument i've always found that kind of frustrating and annoying yeah. when someone goes oh but i want to be happy why why like I, why do you want to sit there and laugh like like you you were happy your entire childhood that's your happy days you're allowed to be happy as that's a kid it. it's all over now right you you're a man you have responsibilities i think we're here to do important provide, protect. yeah protect, provide, provide protect and we're also here to do important things and important things are going to be difficult and they're going to be hard and you're going to get frustrated but that's what gives you purpose yeah. i don't see anyone who's chasing happiness i think that's a very feminine frame i understand why some women just want to be happy i think i don't know the how it feels to be a girl because I'm not one but no. in my experience I know women who just want to be happy yeah girls just want to have fun They're fine have but fun. you're a man right and if you're a man then it's absolutely not really a different experience of life I I think we're here to struggle I think we're here to endure pain yeah. I think we're here to just see how hard we are to kill I think yeah. that going through terrible things and living through them and mm. and coming out the other side is one of the most fantastic things about being human uh, I think that it's, it's almost like once you understand what life is really about, there's no emotion which isn't enjoyable. The only emotion that, the only emotional state which can be seen as detrimental is feeling nothing at all. But if you're sitting at home and you're feeling truly heartbroken, at least you're feeling something, right? Least, and, yeah. and, and I think that's the whole part of being human. I don't, I, I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to go through pain. That's, that's so I wake up each day and go, what can I, what can I attack? What problem can I solve? And, and look at history. Why did Genghis Khan wake up and want to conquer the whole world? Why did Napoleon conquer the world? Why did Alexander the Great conquer the just world? Milk. Just, yeah. You just wake up and just say, give me this. Give me that. I want all of it. I need to. Yeah. There's an army there. They're really big. We're better. Yeah. It's intrinsic. Yeah. You need to go and conquer. That's that's the purpose of life. <laughs> yeah. But what? Like, why do you think that we were created here? to like, what, like, Do you believe that God created us? So why did God create us to struggle? Like, What, what is it? What is it? Because if you don't struggle, you don't learn. Yeah. God created us to learn and understand ourselves and understand other people and understand the world. And what did I say earlier? I said that you don't learn a lesson or you don't appreciate something without, without pain, without pain. Mm. So you have to struggle to learn anything. Mm. There's only two ways to learn things, the hard way or the harder way. If you're smart, you can learn the hard way. But in my experience, 99% of the planet only learn the hardest possible way. If it's, if the lesson's even 85% effective, they'll make the same mistake. It's only when they completely decimate and destroy an element of their life. Do they sit there and go, ah, oh, Oops, now I get it. No. That's how it goes. <laughs> so that There have been so many times in my life where I knew I needed to do something and then I filled all this extra time not doing that thing. And then the moment I did it, I was like, wow, that took way less time than I thought it was going to take. And not only that, it took way less time than it took me to delay to actually get to this point. And if I had only started with just doing what I was supposed to do, I could have done four or five other things that I was also supposed to do by this exact same point. And so thinking about it from that perspective, I've tried to eliminate as much time between, I think I should do this thing and beginning doing it. And I think you get this positive reinforcement cycle that occurs every time you start, I call it pulling the thread. It's like, I just need to start pulling the thread. And then all of a sudden what feels really unknown becomes very tangible and you're like, oh, I understand the six problems I have to solve to do this big thing, but now I know the problems and then it feels like you can tr you can wrap your arms around it and then you can start taking it one bite at a time. This same thing works in reverse as well, that when you put something off, it makes putting it off more manana, manana, manana. I used to define power by the distance between thoughts and reality, um, meaning if you think about somebody who's omnipotent, so if God or the God figure would be omnipotent as he thinks things are. So there's zero space between thoughts and reality. And so if we want to be more God-like in our lives, the distance that we can shrink between wanting to do something or thinking something should be done and it being done is a direct indication of our personal power in our lives. And so that has helped me basically think, don't be a powerless bitch. <laughs> like just shrink the shrink the gap and I think that's why a lot of my my little like personal hacks of waking up and then trying to shrink the time between when I wake up and when I start working and shrinking the time between one task and the next task like you don't need to take 30 minutes of getting ready to start working like you can just start working because as soon as you get into it you start pulling the thread and you're like oh here it is and all of the time that I was getting ready to work I was just using up my best brain power time on things that truly don't move the needle at all
Yeah, I came to call that the productivity rain dance. <laughs> that you sort of do this weird sacred ritual beforehand. Yeah. And we've spoken about this before, but it's, you know, there are certain things that you can do that will make uh, success or productivity or focus more likely and better. Totally. That doesn't mean that you should disregard them, that over-reliance on them makes a very fragile, um, uh, unrobust way to get into working. I would delineate the difference between preparation and routine. And so if I'm preparing for a presentation, for example, I might assemble my notes, I might read some stuff about the audience ahead of time, I might read about whoever's you know, doing the, the event and learn more about that. I see that as preparation for the thing, which I still see as work. And I think some people, I made a, a post about how preparation is like everything. I put a lot into preparation. They're like, oh, see, you have a morning routine. I was like, no, 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 I don't need to to you know, stand on one foot and do 17 cold plunges and write six affirmations because none of those things are directly related to the work that I'm going to do. And so for me, if it's basically preparation is just a stage of the work. And so if I need to prepare to work, then that's fine as long as it's related to the work that I'm going to be doing. Well, we spoke about this yesterday, the difference between focusing on inputs and focusing on outcomes. Uh, right. yeah. If you optimize for outcomes, the inputs are always optimized. But if you optimize for inputs, you go, what did I actually get done at the end of the day? So the person that does do the productivity rain dance and it takes ages and uh, everyone's done this. Everyone's got a blank piece of paper in front of them and they end up washing dishes that they never use. Or, you know, the, the weirdest tasks become alluring because of that. I'm just, a, I'm just a realist. I know how to separate false reality from real reality. And real reality is... No matter how much emotion and feeling you may have or how much hurt you may have, life has to go on. Life doesn't stop mm. for anybody. So if you don't process that and understand that, you're stuck in whatever time period you got hurt forever. Mm. Forever. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. So grudges and anger and negativity, I don't have time for it because mm. I'm living to do so much positive things. Right. I got so much don't bathe such in a that. positive outlook on everything else that's coming in the future. I can't, I can't stand in the past and bathe in what was wrong. 